Hi and welcome to another episode. And today we've got some filthy alloy wheels, a grubby engine bay, and some rather disgusting seats that need cleaning. We're also going to be refurbishing these rather neglected alloy wheels. And we've also got a random appearance from a spider that tries to interfere with our machine polishing. So today's vehicle is a VW Golf Mark IV and this is the five cylinder version and it's a manual. This car's 18 years old and it's only covered 113,000 miles. And the history of this vehicle is very, very good. But over the years, the, maybe the owners has lost a little bit of love for it and it's become a, a little bit neglected if we're honest. So today's mission is to get this car back up to a good standard prior to resale. Apart from the layer of dust and the seats being extremely stained, the interior of this vehicle is in very good condition. Anybody who knows these Mark IVs know they have this kind of strained covering over the plastics that sort of chip over the years and sort of rub off. And that's happened, but apart from that, the inside's in one piece and there's no wear on the side bolsters or anything like that. So with a good deep clean, we should be able to get this car into a really good standard. Things like the petrol flap and the door shuts in the vehicle, as we can see here, have got quite a lot of buildup of green algae type stuff and mold that we're gonna to need to scrub and remove. Also, the alloy wheels are in a pretty poor state. They're completely encrusted in brake dust that's been on there for quite some time, and there's visibly quite a lot of curbing and marks on them. So I've pre-treated the alloy wheel here and the tyre with a very strong all-purpose cleaner. And I've also sprayed some of that inside of the wheel arch liner as well, because on these earlier cars these are plastic. So I can now use a soft fire cam brush and also an EZ wheel brush, and I can use that to agitate inside the wheel arch and remove any of the dirt and debris in there. After that I'm going to use one of the smaller EZ wheel brushes to get in between the spokes and start loosening off some of that encrusted brake dust. Alloy wheels that are this encrusted with brake dust may take two or three attempts to get it completely off. So for the second time here, I've gone over with a stronger dedicated alloy wheel cleaner and I'm using a slightly stiffer brush just to try get in there, agitate it and loosen off the really ingrained brake dust. And we can see here as I rinse off, this might have been the second or third uh, pass over this, it's got 90% of the brake dust off and we can actually start to see the damage on the wheel a little bit more. The engine bay on this vehicle wasn't that bad. The plastics have got a layer of dust over them and it's more metal work uh, where the shut line is between the bonnet and the front wing. A bit like the tailgate we saw earlier, they've just got a bit of green lichen and sort of moss and things sort of build up over there a period of time and it just needed a brush in there to get it agitated and get it out. So first of all, I've used the soft fire cam brush over the larger plastic areas. Then I've just got an older interior brush and uh, I've used that just to go around to the sort of harder to reach areas before rinsing off the all-purpose cleaner. Now that the car's inside the workshop and it's dry, we can look to start vacuum cleaning the interior. Um, I'm using one of these newer style softer interior brushes. Um, I only had one of those about a couple of weeks. Really like them to be honest, they're really, really nice. And on the camera, I've just sprayed some uh, anti-static foam cleaner. This is very similar to what you would use, for example, cleaning a computer keyboard. I like using it around things like the radio and switch gear because you, know, you don't want to get those areas too wet. And this stuff's designed for that kind of electrical component and it's got quite good cleaning properties as well.
After the car's been thoroughly vacuum cleaned, I'm then going to proceed on to using all purpose cleaner, um, a little detail brush there, and some microfibers to clean the inside plastics. Uh, if you haven't seen the process before, um, I literally just use a little bit of APC, agitate it with the brush, and then I use a damp microfiber just to wipe the residue of the all purpose cleaner off in the water. And I also use in conjunction with that an airline as well, because that's going to do a number of things. It drives debris out of areas that maybe you just can't get the brush into because of the got that little bit of pressure behind it and also dries the plastic as well so I can almost get instantly the finished articles because I can see if it needs you know, a second pass or a bit more agitating to remove any dirt. Roof linings can be quite an overlooked area and also where the seat belt buckle is as well. You'll notice I make sure I pull it all the way up or all the way down just to make sure the fabric behind it, uh, usually quite a good point for collecting dirt and muck, is given a thorough clean as well because if somebody, obviously a new customer comes along, first thing you do is pull the seat belt and obviously having a quite a light trim there, they're gonna potentially see a load of dirt from the previous owner. So I'm using a DeWalt drill with a chemical guys brush attachment. So they do a range of different stiffnesses of the drill brushes. Uh, this one's probably the softest one they do. And it's just really good in conjunction with some sort of pre-treated area with all purpose cleaner. Uh, just biting into the fabric a little bit and loosening off the dirt. You can find some of these seats if it's, you know, the fill's been on there a really long time almost get like a waxy surface to them and you need to break through that so that when you go over it with the wet extractor it's going to help pull that dirt out a lot quicker. I usually spray the all-purpose cleaner uh, into the seat with a hand pump spray as we've seen already and then mostly nine times out of ten I would imagine depending on the level of filth in these cars the wet extractor just got warm water in it so it's actually flushing the seat at the same time so it's almost like a washing machine you put the detergent on it's been spun and scrubbed a bit with brush and then afterwards you're just using the machine to suck it out the initially the filth on the all-purpose cleaner and then pump some fresh clean water through there to rinse the fabric out The leading edge of this armrest was absolutely disgusting. It had gone very waxy, like I explained a minute ago. Just that front bit by the handle, obviously, over the years where somebody's sort of rested the hand on there and pulled it up and down. So it was something I really needed to get that drill brush on, give it a thorough scrubbing. And as we're about to see, you really get quite a lot of goop and scuzz out of that small area of fabric. But it's something that's really, really disgusting.
Now the inside of the vehicle is done, I can now concentrate on starting the outside and I'm going to tackle these rather neglected and curved up alloy wheels first. Something I've noticed straight away and reported to the customer is that the tyres are in a really poor state of repair, and in fact dangerous and need replacing. So the tyre sidewalls become very perished and cracked, and I'm also going to point to a little number on the side of the tyre. This first one says 3714. The 37 stands for the 37th uh, week in the year and the 14 is 2014. This tyre is even older, at 23rd week of 2002, so the tyre is nearly 18 years old, so that definitely needs replacing. Interestingly, uh, a lot of this damage is purely on the surface of the alloy wheel. What I mean by that is it hasn't gone all the way through to the metal. You could just sand the top two layers off being the clear coat and the base coat, and even in some cases down to the primer, as we're spotting on camera, and it's removed all the damage. With the flat surface of the wheel done, I'll now swap to a smaller sander and just go around the lip of the alloy wheel and remove any curbing on the very edge. Once that process is complete, I'm then going to use some sandpaper between the spokes. Typically I'm going to use 240 grit, then 500 grit, and then I'll go to a scotch bright pad to finish off. We can then move on to the stage of cleaning the alloy wheel prior to paint. So we can use a solvent degreaser here. That's going to do a number of things. It's going to remove any dust and debris on the alloy wheel, also any grease or silicons that may affect the painting process. Then I'm going to mask up the wheel so it's protected from the paint. Usually I would go over the tire tread a bit more and protect any overspray getting on that. But as we already know, the tires are absolutely you know, shot on this car, they need replacing. So I haven't been overly fussy about that um, because the honest answer is once this vehicle leaves my workshop, it's going to be driven 10 miles down the road, go to a mechanical workshop and they're going to fit four new tires to the car. I'm then going to use this little bit of garden hose to cover up the tire valve. And I'm going to use a flat bladed screwdriver just to make sure the masking tape is seated all the way around the edge of the alloy wheel. So to start with we're going to go over this alloy wheel with some etch primer. We need to do that because we've got bare metal and we need to seal that prior to putting the base coat on which is obviously going to be silver on this so it's got something to adhere to. Once the primer is dried, which has taken about half an hour, we can now put the silver base coat over that and then we can move on to lacquering the alloy wheel. I've obviously sped the process of this up so we're not sitting here all day, but as we're about to see on camera, the reason why they're on this stand is you can quite conveniently move them around and get in between the spokes and get good coverage. As I've explained in previous videos, this is more of a smart repair than a full wheel refurbishment, but on some of these cheaper vehicles, the motor traders just don't want to spend a lot of money. so. It's a good compromise between doing nothing, um, them spending a lot of money and having them completely you know, acid stripped and etc. and completely redone. And it's always going to be a massive improvement to the appearance of the vehicle at the end. It's the same situation with these brake calipers as with the alloy wheels. If you wanted to do a full refurbishment, you'll need to remove them to the, from the vehicle, go for a lengthy process which is fantastic if you, know, you want a massive long-term solution. However, again, the motor trade just wants a quick tidy up, so this is a good compromise. Whilst the wheels are off the car, it gives me perfect access to these plastic wheel arch liners as well. So I'm going to take the opportunity to dress these prior to the tyre going back on. And whilst the car's off the floor, a little bit higher up in the air, I'm going to take the opportunity to go over the lower parts of the car with some tar and glue remover and remove all the tar spots as well. With the paint cured, I can now put the alloy wheels back on the car. I'm always going to put the bolts on uh, by hand first, so they're not cross-threaded. And when I'm using the impact gun, I'm using its lowest setting. Um, it's just really nipping those bolts up. And then what I'll do afterwards is go over with a torque wrench, the correct settings, and make sure the wheel's done to specification. With 
with the engine bay all dressed and now looking nice, I can concentrate on the outside of the car. So we've done the tar and glue remover. Now I'm using a clay bar just to remove any more contaminants on the paintwork, things like tree sap, fallout, etc. before I start using the machine polisher. And if you look closely at the right hand side of the screen, we're about to see the spider come crawling out and chase the machine polisher down the bonnet. Maybe it was a guard spider and it didn't like the idea of the machine polisher on the car. Don't panic though, I didn't squash him. I've just simply gone and got a whole paper mat and he conveniently actually crawled straight into the middle of it and let me take him outside and stick him out on some grass or something so he can live out there. So today I've used Koshkemi One Cut and Finish, it's a new compound to me. It has the benefit of being able to literally compound the car and then you buff it off and that's it because it's all waxes and seals the car in one go. It's actually a really good product. Um, I know Rupes have come out with one called Uno which is similar, so I'm just trying both at the moment to see which one I prefer. Um, I've also then gone for Koshkemi uh, Quick Shine afterwards, which is like a quick detailer just over the paintwork to give it a little bit more of a boost and give it that really nice shiny look at the end. With the glass clean, we're nearly finished. One last thing to do is to dress the tyres and sort out those horrendously disgusting tired centre caps. So I've got a nice new set here, and as we can see the difference is like night and day, they definitely need a replacing. I've also got some new little plastic black caps to go over the wheel nuts as well, so it's going to finish that final appearance and make that wheel look really good. With all this process complete, we can now take the car outside and do quite a comparison of before and after of how much we've improved this little car. And though I'll be the first to say this is never going to be a Concourse show vehicle, it's a monumental improvement compared to what it looked before, and it's going to do somebody a really good service. You know, this car's still got a lot of life left in it, and these Mark IVs are very strong, reliable, and very popular still, so it shouldn't have any trouble finding a new home.
As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos and keep tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, maybe think about doing that, it'd be much appreciated. And you'll be pleased to know there's another video coming probably within the next two weeks. And it's a beige interior that's been, uh, well, it's had a dog running around the back of it, so we can imagine what that looks like. So definitely tune in for the next one, and I'll see you soon.